Have you ever noticed that meat sometimes has rainbow colours on it? What is that? And should it go straight in the bin? I can see this kind of gold, green... There's reds in there too. Not too sure to what that could be. By binning it, am I wisely dodging Listeria or E. coli? Or am I contributing to the half a million tonnes of meat the UK threw away last year? It's within its use-by date and straight out of the fridge. Is it OK to eat? I'm really not too sure there, to be honest. It, it, it would be entirely up to yourself. Uh, I wouldn't advise eating it if you can't see a discrepancy with it, but in all right. honesty, that would have not stopped me at all. I love bacon. Oh, really? So is this meat safe to eat? I'm off to find out. I would eat it. It's just not very appetising. Yeah. <laughs> Do you know what it is? No, I was going to ask you if you knew what it was. <laughs> Google it. Surely the butchers must know. I mean, I couldn't tell you exactly what what it is. That's just how, how, how bacon is. As you move it in the light, you'll see that rainbow effect. Something to do with the light? Yeah, I'm sure it is. Interesting, Tony. So, my butcher friend claims the colours I'm seeing on the meat are just a trick of the light. I think he might be onto something. To find out, I'm meeting two scientists who work with optics and light. They've agreed to meet us here at the National Glass Centre. Some advanced parking required. It is a snowy start in Sunderland. Good morning. Hello. I'm Hello. meeting okay. Mies Islam, Professor of Physical Chemistry, and Dr Safwan Akram, an expert in analytical biotechnology. Perfect combo. And we're in the National Glass Centre, which I think is a perfect place to learn about light. Exactly. And meats. Yeah. <laughs> Not so much about meat, but definitely about light. <laughs> The Glass Centre is filled with sculptures and exhibits that celebrate glass and, most importantly, light. Aha! Well, this is all very lovely. Aha! More meats! But what does it all have to do with my ham? How is that rainbow being created on the surface of the maze? So this is something which we call diffraction grating. Actually, Mies has a few examples. If you are over the age of 26, you'll have seen <laughs> one of these. The rainbow colour that you can see, um, this is due to the fact that when you write on the CD, you create very, very fine structures. When white light falls on it, it causes the, um, the, the colours to be split into their individual components. So, in fact, although to the eye this surface looks flat, if I was to put this under a microscope, there would be pits and bumps. Yeah, absolutely. These pits and bumps are caused when the data is burned into the CD, forming microscopic structures, which create a rainbow effect when light bounces off them. That's CDs. But what's happening here? So, for example, you have a big piece of meat here. Mm -hmm. If you cut across that, rather than cutting along, if you cut across it, then what you end up with is the diffraction grating. Let's have a look at that close-up. When you slice against muscle fibres, which run perpendicular in the meat, the ends of the fibres are exposed, and they create a very bumpy surface that refracts light and separates it into colours. Thanks, graphics team. In fact, if you put that piece of beef under a microscope, what? you wouldn't see a flat surface. You would see that. Yes, exactly. Some people think that it has, like, you know, it has an impact on meat quality in terms of it's spoiled or anything. No. It's not spoiled and it's tasty. So don't worry if there's glitter in your gammon. It really is just a trick of the light. As long as your meat is within its use-by date and has been stored correctly, then it's safe to tuck in.